What's going on guys and girls, how are you doing today? It's Anger Roleplay once again and today I want to show you the build that I have planned for the upcoming Incursion League and this is a very classic build called the Cyclone Slayer build with a Slayer Ascendancy on the Duelist. A Cyclone itself is an incredibly old skill, it was introduced in 2013 and is still there after 5 years and it, uh, even though it's kind of got a couple of nerfs and buffs, it's still very powerful and it packs quite a bit of damage and Uber, even Uber Elder can be killed with this exact skill. Currently there are two different versions of how the build can be played. One with the Disfavor uh, Valex, a series Disfavor Valex, and another is the Starforge uh, Sword, which drops from the Shaper. These two versions have a very uh, a lot a lot of things in common, but they're a bit of different as well. With that series Disfavor, you are supposed to go with the Bleed Root because that series Disfavor has in name twenty five percent chance to cause bleeding on head, and paired with uh, the Hemophilia Serpent's Kick Galness uh, will give you explosion as well, they give you a 50% increase chance to cause bleeding, bleeding on it, which is absolutely massive. Now I'm not a fan of Crimson Dan Dance to be honest, a lot of people I see are stacking Crimson Dance in the bleeding uh, builds, but I believe that it's not really that crazy, I think it's much more important to just go some extra damage like the butchery and I think it will be the same kind of damage uh, as with the Crimson Dance. So uh, with the Atsuris Disfavor you go bleed, with the Starforge you go non-bleed, basically that's uh, the whole difference between the two setups. Star 4 version of Cyclone Slayer build packs a little more damage than the Disfavor, simply because uh, the Starforge itself does around 100, uh, around 100 more DPS, it's around 700 dips while the Disfavor is around 600 dips. So just more damage for the Starforge with basically the same tree and the same skill gems, everything is pretty much the same. For the tree are just going with physical damage with swords, life, uh, and all leech that you can get as well as all attack speed, it's nothing really crazy. We also gun resolute technique to hit all the time, all the time entirely. For the items it's pretty straightforward, I guess Starforge, Devoto's Devotion with increased cyclone damage because uh, cyclone is also a movement skill and movement skill um, needs movement speed, that's why we need Devoto's uh, OP for this. Calm's Heart is there now uh, instead of Belly of the Beast because Belly will give us around uh, 700, uh, 7000 life here but with Calm's Heart it's actually possible to go way over 7000 uh, 7, life, somewhere in the range of 7.5 actually 5000 uh, life and this is literally the only way to reach this high amount of life. For the gloves, like I said, uh, this basically just normal attack speed gloves with life and resist, but hemophilia gloves, like I mentioned in the disfavor part of the video, is extremely powerful and this is what I will be using even with the Starforge version, because 25% uh, chance to cause bleeding on hit and then the explosions is what really clears all the shit on screen. For the boots, that's actually a very interesting thing, uh, because the normal boots, uh, the high res boots should be like this, the two tone boots with high movement speed and lightning resistant life, but there are interesting things about another pair of boots and uh, the lab enchantment here. So look at the Starforge, it deals no elemental damage, but your physical damage can shock, what it means is that when you deal physical damage, there is a chance that you will shock the enemies. The real problem is, in order to chance, uh, in, in order to shock the enemy, there can be two different routes. First of all, you need uh, to have a chance to shock on the tree somewhere or, or on the gear somewhere. Uh, but the physical damage itself cannot shock. I mean, it can shock, but there should be a chance to shock in order that, so that you can shock. Uh, so you need a chance to shock or you need critical strike. Uh, the real problem is we got resolute technique, we never do a critical strike, so the only way how we can actually do shocking is this, uh, is this, which tends to shock, freeze and ignite elementalist, this is like the closest, the closest knot that you can get, and another weird thing uh, how we can get the chance to shock is basically this, 
This is the lab enchantment on the boats and gives us 10% chance to free shock and ignite if you haven't crit recently. And since we never crit, we always run with 10% chance, chance to free shock and ignite. And this, if, if we actually shock, look at the fucking damage, guys. Look at the fucking damage. So bam, it's over a million. So basically, this is can be pretty absolutely shit crazy amount of damage if we can actually shock but you know getting boots with this enchant can be a pretty bitch but i would try to see if it actually does anything for me another uh, pretty standard enchantment that this 60 percent increase attack speed if you have killed recently this is pretty uh you know standard uh, enchantment on the boots for any attack skill based skill so basically this uh, chance to shock or just uh, resistance that is basically it for the amulet there are two options which is carnage heart for leech and another is duress's salute for slightly more damage and more melee range as well because it gives us plus two to melee on weapon and an arm range the rings are basically steel rings with a lot of life and resistance since physical damage is nothing crazy for the belt it can be ridiculous amount of variations you can go Stygian Vises, uh, you can go, Belt of the Deceiver gives you more damage than anything else and uh, Preservance is also incredibly powerful because you can also onslaught when you have fortified and onslaught and means more damage. For the flasks it's very straightforward because Taste of Hate and uh, the Serious Promise will not work because we don't deal no elemental damage so it's just life, Blood of the Karui, Quicksilver's Lion's Roar and the Chemist Silver Flask of Warding. And whatever resistance you need to feel, you can use any resistance flask, whatever. Uh, the jewels are basically melee damage, life, attack speed with source, attack speed, melee damage, area damage, uh, basically anything. Physical damage with source, physical, global physical damage. So anything, anything, uh, uh, anything useful for the build. So uh, this is the build, guys, and this is the plan. And like I said, this build is extremely straightforward, extremely easy. The skill setup is very, very, very easy. You have Cyclone with main brutality, melee fees, damage, and full life and Kong effect. On the falling, we have Blasphemy, vulnerability, and Grace. Grace gives us a lot of armor, uh, a fuck ton of armor actually, uh, because we use uh, Iron Reflexes, which converts all evasion to armor, and of 60% uh, physical mitigation is a lot. So it's very, very strong. If we get this vulnerability enchantment, uh, corruption on the gloves, on the uh, hemophilia, on just a normal gloves, we can drop vulnerability for something else here. Anything can be used. On the falling is in Castle Watch, if Conk effect, Melefis and Brutality, which is basically the buff. On the falling, another is Leap Slam, Faster Takes, Fortify, and Lightning Golem. Another thing that I learned recently when I started optimizing the build is that Lightning Golem actually gives us more damage than the Flame Golem, which was a surprise for me. So this is the build, guys. Uh, like I mentioned previously, the build is super easy to start with and also can be pretty demanding in the game, in the end game. So it has stretch goals, which are personal like, like I know getting Starforge will not be easy. Devotos with uh, Cyclone is not easy as well. Comes Heart can be pricey, but, but can be farmed with the cards. Everything else like the Darasa Suit and current Heart are also pretty expensive at the start of the deck. Steel Rings also a huge stretch goal because it can be pretty damn expensive. Everything else are mostly expensive jewels. So it has a lot of work to do uh, and I really hope I will enjoy the build because I haven't played Cyclone for about three to four years and my first cycle experience was or uh, experience was pretty shit so that's about it thanks for watching guys see you soon i'll link the uh i will leave the links with the part of building uh descriptions uh in the comment section thank you very much and see you soon